Welcome back. In the last section, we were looking at the work environment at Snowflake. In this section, what we will be doing is we will import the data set that we would like to use in this course. And so for us to do that, we will go back one step and then go to the marketplace. So now Snowflake provides like, you know, they have this marketplace where people can buy data. We might have access to some, you know, data that is interesting for maybe your research or maybe you're sort of interested to have a certain data. So you might buy some data here or you might also get some free data. So what we will be doing is we'll be using one of the free data in this course. And so one way we could do is just go through, you know, the most popular, we click the more. And then now we're essentially looking for a housing data. So this is like this, this U.S. housing data, housing data. So we can click, the, we can just search this. And essentially what we are doing now is selecting the free plant. So the name of a data set is, yeah. U.S. housing and real estate essentials. So when you see this, it's basically provided by Cyber Scene um, Incorporated. So you can click that. And then you will see a, a bit of detail about what the data set includes, like what is available in the data set. And then what you can do afterwards is click the get button. So it's like the free unlimited access, then click the get button. So when you click the get button, you would notice that it has some extra options um, in my, if you would change the database. So the idea is you're essentially bringing this data into your partition and you wouldn't, you know, you just, you wouldn't store the data so you wouldn't be paying any cost, but you can essentially say, oh, this is how I would like to, you know, store the name of a data database. So I mean, perhaps we can just, you know, keep the name of the database as it is and, and just click the get. So, um, after some, you know, minutes, it comes out with, um, the query data option or the done. So if you want to query the data right away, you can click the query data and it automatically creates a worksheet, um, in Snowflake. And this takes a bit of time to you know, sort of create the worksheets and then it comes out with a default query, right? So you have a default query, uh, that, that is running, uh, which is something like this. Uh, you don't have to worry about this at the moment. And so what you might notice is that you have the database, a new database that is added. So this is like the database we imported and it's named us housing, real estate essentials. And so, um, we can, uh, just basically have our, you know, database schema structure. So for under the database, you have two schemas, you have this information schema, which is a metadata schema. It's sort of in every, um, database of Snowflake, you have that information schema. And then you have one, um, other schema, which is like the main schema in this case. So, and which is called the cyber scene. And under the cyber scene, you have like a couple of tables, right? Or a couple of views in this case. So, um, there's just a slight difference between what a table and a view is. It's very much similar. Um, but, uh, we might go into that maybe, you know, a bit later in the course, um, the, diff the differences between a view and, 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 the and the table. Uh, but then in the meantime, I mean, you can also check this out. You notice like you have the information schema and, uh, and then you have some other schemas. Yeah. So in the meantime, we're going to delete all this, uh, initial query. And then we're going to write a very simple query, which is just select star from us housing essentials. So essentially what happens here is, um, Snowflake helps to predict what you're trying to write, uh, but it's kind of easier because we already selected this or it was, you know, pre-selected for us. So, um, essentially when you type something, then it's trying to predict what you're trying to write. So it's like predicting this, that's the name of the, 
our database. And under the database, now we want to locate the schema. So once we locate the schema, which is the cyber scene, and then we can locate one of the tables, right? Which is maybe the cyber scene data catalog, right? So, and then we have it. So, and so we have the access to this database or this table, sorry. And so now we can run the query, but then I would like to limit it by five. So you can also do the same from your side and then you run your first query, right? I will still explain this very much. Now, when you run your first query, you will get a table like this, which is essentially what is included in, you know, in the, in the, in the table, it gives a sample data of the table. So you see, it's more like your Excel. It's stored like your Excel, but it's just that it's available in the, you know, in the cloud. Um, essentially you have like the table name, the table name proper and other, you know, very interesting fields, right? And so I will just, you know, I'll just explain this quick query. Um, and then in the next video, we will take each and every um, element of the query and we'll explain it. So here, what we're doing is we're selecting all, all fields from this particular table, which is the uh, cyber scene data catalog table. But then we set limit five. So we want to see only five rows. So the first five rows. And this is a very, um, very nice trick. Um, for that be used as analysts, as data um, architects, and you know anybody who's consuming data. This is a very interesting trick because you get a quick view or a quick glimpse of what the data consists of uh, before you start, you know, doing your analysis, right? And because if you were to not limit the five, then it's taking a long time to bring all the data. So, um, yeah. And this is, this is essentially like your first query. Another way you could have written this query separately is that, you know, here you notice that you must have selected the database. Then you selected the schema, which is essentially um, indicating this. And then you write the table name, right? However, if you have already selected the database and the schema here, you could essentially skip that here. And so basically you just go straight to the table. And then you can also run. Yes. And so you have like the, um, you know, you still have the same results. So in the next uh, video, we would, you know, go down and maybe explain a few um, important clauses in SQL. Uh, kindly uh, look forward to the next video. Thanks.